certainly enjoyed your talk before the student body today. Hello, Mary. Well, thanks. I am always glad to speak of the importance of civic responsibilities, especially to the youngsters. You know, there's too much let jaws do it. Something for nothing thinking going on around these days. Yes, I know. Hello, Mr. Wilson. Oh, hello, Miss Robinson. You know, it seems to me that you're in a very good position to get to the trend of this, Merritt, right in the classroom. Well, as a matter of fact, this something for nothing attitude that you speak of used to crop up in my classes all the time. Now, uh, seeing Miss Robinson reminds me of an experience I had with it once. If you have time, I'd like to tell you about it. It might be encouraging to you. Are you walking? I'll listen. Well, it all goes back to my first PTA meeting. Now, after I was introduced, I gave a short talk, you know, expressing my general approach to economics. And there were several... It certainly has been nice meeting you, Mr. Johnson. Good night. It's nice to meet you, Mrs. Davis. Good night. I think the board made a very good choice, don't you? Oh, I think he's cute. Well, after the meeting, we had coffee and sandwiches to help us get acquainted. I felt as if I were perched in a glass cage. I could almost feel eyes looking me over. Some of their appraisals I could hear. Danny, don't you and Mother want to meet the new teacher? I don't want to meet him. I don't like him. Well. And I don't like my daughter being exposed to his horse and buggy, Horatio Alger work and wind baloney. This pious prejudice against the welfare state is nothing but a front for special privilege. I tell you, he's the kind of a teacher that blocks progress. Well, please. Mary, that man actually glorifies the personal gain motive. And besides that... And there it was, right down the line. It was a shock. But I was glad to know at the outset that I must be prepared for such as this. You're supposed to be preparing for a new dynamic world. Daddy, please, he'll hear you. I don't care if he does. I have a right to express my opinions. That's more than you'll get in his classes. Now, class, it's just as important to our economic health that all of us understand the mechanical operation of our economic body and how to avoid behavior injurious to it as a knowledge of the functions of our physical body and the proper treatment of it is to our physical health. Let's consider then the elements which make up man's material welfare. And suppose we analyze. Now, what is involved in building a simple log cabin like this? What would we need? Logs. Think again. Trees come before logs. That's right. Trees. All right, now, what else do we need? Some elbow grease. Manpower. Right. Human energy. What else? Well, a man has to have something to work with, doesn't he? An axe. A saw. That's right. A tool. Well, an axe is easier for me to draw. There. Now, this crude artwork illustrates that everything which contributes to man's material welfare is the product of natural resources plus human energy, multiplied by tools. Man works, that is, produces goods and services by applying his energy to natural resources with the aid of tools. The quantity and quality of those goods and services depends upon the quantity and quality of the man's energy and the effectiveness of his tools. Is that clear? Now, the man who works all day long plowing his fields with the help of an ox can probably raise only enough food for his own use. 
But if the farmer works all day long, plowing his fields with a team of horses, he can increase his food production. He can probably raise enough for three families. And if the farmer uses a tractor to plow his fields, he can raise his food production to enough for five families. Now you can see that since the human energy remains the same in all three of the food examples, the increase in man's material welfare is due to the improvement in the tool applied to the job. Now this is a simple illustration to show that man's material welfare has increased according to the increase in the effectiveness of his tools of production. And these tools came into being for the simple reason that people wanted to get ahead and they were willing to sacrifice to get the tools. Is that clear? Gail? But people no longer get ahead as individuals. They get ahead as cooperative groups, not trying to tear each other down, but, but build each other up. No person can be secure economically as long as anybody else is insecure. The underprivileged must be rewarded according to their needs, and not just according to what they produce. Gail is really quoting Karl Marx, who said, from each according to his ability, to each according to his need. What do you think about it? Sounds fair enough. Sure, everyone has to eat. <laughs> you to think about this. Really think how it will affect you. And we'll talk about it later in our next class. I was more worried than puzzled. How could I combat this kind of thinking? What could I do to get back at the source of indoctrination of students like Miss Robinson? It's my job. There must be a way. Well, at least I have until tomorrow. Well, class, there seems to be some surprise at the marks on your last test papers. As a matter of fact, in most cases, those are not the correct grades. They are simply the result of doing what we talked about yesterday. And naturally, some of you do better work than others. Some of you might even fail while others get high marks. But following this motto, we've taken the high marks and divided them up with the low ones. And that way, everybody passes, even the poor students. That's fine, but I don't want my grade cut down. I work hard for my marks, and I want what I earn. I know I did better than this. We deserve credit for what we do. My dad would cut my allowance. The kids with the best grades get the best jobs. It just isn't fair. Well, suppose we give you a chance to think this grading system over and continue our discussion tomorrow. Talk it over with your parents if you want to. misunderstood the question. It could happen to anyone. You'll be able to make it up. Oh, it's not that, Mother. Yesterday, the teacher was telling us that American prosperity was based on personal progress and private ownership of tools of production. Mm. Well, I got up and said what Daddy's always telling me, that, that real progress could only come when people's needs were recognized by the privileged class. 
Well, today we got our test papers back with those grades. Teacher said he was following the rule we all agreed yesterday was the right one. From each according to his ability, to each according to his needs. This is the last straw. I am sick and tired of the nonsense we get from your father around the house all the time. From each according to his ability. Personal progress is the law of the jungle. Bushwa. Just wait till he gets home. I'll... And what will you do, my love? Give me a kiss. What's for dinner? Now, will you listen to me? I... Gail, go set the table for dinner. Yes, Mom. No, you don't. Well, I'm serious. You've got to promise to quit filling this girl's head with all those silly notions that fly right in the face of nature. You know we want Gail to go to college. Oh, I don't know about that. But even if she goes out to get a job after she's through school, she's got to have good marks to get a good job. What's this all about, anyway? She gets good marks, doesn't she? No, she wouldn't if you had your way. You'd have everybody knocked down to the same level. Now, wait a minute. What's got into you? I've got to write any ideas I want. Yes, even at your own daughter's expense. Well, just look at the grades that girl came home with today. You know she's a better student than that. And it's just because her teacher agreed to follow some of your precious ideas. Oh, I hope he's not serious about all this. Is this your real grade, Gail? Well, this is the grade I earned, Daddy. But in order to treat everybody in the class equally, the teacher had to subtract 20 from my mark. Everybody received the same grade, 75. Well, that's just passing. Daddy, do you think this is fair? Should I suffer because some of the other boys and girls don't study hard enough? Here's your chance to practice what you preach. Come on, Gail, let's get dinner on the table. Gail? Well, yes, Mother. It takes a good deal of courage and determination for a man to face the truth when he's wrong. When his ideas are found to be unworkable, and it takes honesty to admit that you've been passing opinions along without questioning them. But Mr. Robinson was basically an honest man, and he won out in the struggle with himself. Gail. Yes, Daddy? You're not mad at me, are you? No, Daddy. I want you to tell your teacher, Mr. Wilson, that I, I'm going to apologize to him and thank him. I guess I've been preaching something that just can't be practiced. It really backfired. I'm very proud of you. And you're much better than the average, and I always want you to be. Thanks, Daddy. Well, the next day, Gail made a little speech before the class that really warmed the cockles of my heart. And the whole class agreed with her that incentive is an economic necessity. When I asked them what would happen to production if there were no incentive for adult workers, they answered that some sort of a policeman would have to make people work. Now, how's that for a happy ending? It's a wonderful story, Merritt. So beautifully simple. You know, Merritt, if you were eligible, I'd like you to run for city council. Well, thanks, Mr. Mayor. But I do have a good friend who really knows the score that I'm sure you could interest. Well, your recommendation is good enough for me. Who is he? Mr. Robinson, Gail's father. Well, I'll be... Think it over.